Recreating yourself digitally is a technical challenge that is incredibly useful, said no one ever. But a lot of companies are trying to solve it for some reason. Meta with their metaverse, AI photogrammetry with 3D avatars, image to 3D mesh synthesis, or even quote unquote deepfakes are being promoted to use in this way. But I don't really see any big money that could be made from this, so I don't get why people are developing it. Maybe you will need it in 50 years to get into Matrix, who knows? But to be honest, that goes for a lot of technologies that were developed without a purpose too. Like how GPS back in 1973 was invented without an actual use case, but now has become a necessity for literally anything related to traveling. So I'll give it a benefit of doubt. In today's video, we are going to take a quick dive into one of the methods for making digital replicas. Because while being the most prominent, it has been one of the most problematic and controversial technologies over the years. It is the approach that has raised countless outrage and hate and caused quite a lot of trouble on the internet. Some people may know it as deepfake, some people may know it as image animation. While they are still generally doing the same thing like manipulating people's faces on digital media, there is still a pretty good distinction where one is replacing a face and the other is animating a face. Previously, I covered both methods in a variety of videos, you can check them out, and if you look closely, some research on the image animation side is working on more than just animating faces. There has been body animation and animal animation alongside, but these results are just so much more inferior to what facial animations can do. On the other hand, research that completely focuses on generating body animation was a bit promising, but still looks very goofy as it attempts to recreate a 3D representation of the subject. This huge difference between body and faces generation might be because faces are just an easier domain for AI to learn since all the movements are contained within an oval, while for a full body, there are four limbs that can move in all four different directions. So nothing has progressed much since Liquid Warping Gan, which was published like three years ago until last month. Out of the blue, Alibaba Group published this research called Animate Anyone, where given an image in a post-guiding video as a reference, it can easily animate anyone within the image. This seemingly simple input and output that you see is actually pretty difficult and complex to achieve as there are so many moving parts that need to do its job for you to see the end result not looking like some alien blob. Like first of all, you have to detect, outline, and crop out the person in the input image. Second, you need to use a reference reference video to animate the body. Third, you have to regenerate the body to match the pose. Fourth, you have to do it over time. Fifth, you have to make sure the clothes are coherent even after body movement. This is even harder because unlike the body which is similar across subjects, clothes can vary a lot between all inputs. On top of that, you have to synthesize it consistently which is just absurd. So for the past three years with no progress, I was genuinely convinced that no one would be bothered to make a pipeline as complex as this, with a good chance that they will get death threats on top of the research having literally zero practical use cases. I guess anything that's labeled as AI in the past year, any big companies will be down to sprinkle some money down the drain, especially China with their speed in developing AI. What's even crazier is that Animate Anyone even works on 2D characters, illustrated, rendered, even 3D. As long as it has four limbs, its body can be animated. It only struggles mildly on in painting the background. The hands are separated and regenerated cleanly even if the input image is not as intuitive about where the illustrated hands are. And of course, all these good capabilities not only have to come from good AI architecture design, but also high quality training data that the AI can learn from. But as you should know, never ask a woman her age, a man his salary, in China where they got the data from. Uh, what is this? I have no clue, oh my god. While the research paper does look really legit, proposing a lot of new methods like ReferenceNet to address the difficulties I mentioned before, a lot of people highly suspect that this research is faked. Some people even found evidence that the official demos might just be a regeneration of the training data since they could find the original videos online. But I mean, if it's really regenerating or faked, that still doesn't answer the question of why 2D illustration can be animated that well. The codes were not 
published at that time, so no one could really verify either. However, the shock that something suddenly got so good out of the blue harbored an extreme amount of attention and not necessarily good attention too. Like the person you guys saw at the start of the video got absolutely bombarded with a crazy amount of hate for just sharing about the research on Twitter. But I mean, it's Twitter, so why am I surprised? While there are definitely some serious ethical concerns of the dubious potential the technology can bring, it's still crazy how Twitter nearly started a witch hunt just for this research on a person that only shared it while not knowing if this research is real or not. But of course, a few weeks later, ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok, slammed a near identical research called Magic Animate, with it being completely open sourced. Rather than using post skeletons like Animate Anyone, they are instead using dense posts which contains richer body information when used as reference video. This choice can be both good and bad as dense posts gives the model more confidence on the precise regions to manipulate, but it falls short as these regions would define the outline of the human body. So if the dense post has a larger body type, the person in the input would be stretched to fit the dense post. But holy crap, it's good. There are so many possibilities with this, especially for doing something like rotoscoping or creating animation tests. It works pretty well on illustrations, and some people even made composite like this one, which is pretty cool. It's also good in a hilariously bad way too. And for some odd reason, the AI keeps on trying to strip people, which is pretty funny. My guess on why it happens is that too much of data is on girls that wear crop tops, so it's really easy to get clothes removed in the stomach area. Like if you look at the demos in the project page, most of the females are wearing crop tops. The AI probably look at too many crop tops that it naturally generates the effect of clothes being lifted even when someone is not wearing a crop top. And you think the technology developments just end here? Nope, the saga continues, as Alibaba Group announced yet another research a month later called Dream Moving, which is very similar to Animate Anyone but with a slight difference. While Animate Anyone animates an input image with a post sequence and MP any missing parts, Dream Moving takes in a post sequence, but this time all the content is generated by a video model based on SD 1.5, which includes a video of a person dancing and a background image. Then you can choose to use a reference image if you want, and it'll basically face swap the face onto the AI generated video. And I'm actually mind blown by how smooth and coherent the dancing looks like, because all the previous AI generated dancing videos have some sort of flickering or interpolation artifacts since there is a lack of consistency over frames. On top of that, just look at how natural the clothes move and look. The textures did not break apart and it follows the motions when the person moves. These are some seriously impressive fluidness and coherency. So people might soon throw out IP adapter and control it and use this new research when it's implemented because it has overcome what some of the open source people are trying to accomplish for the past year. While anime anyone is probably not going to be open source since some Chinese app is now implementing this as a feature, and an official implementation has emerged. And alongside Magic Animate, it'll definitely cause some havoc on the internet. I remember I saw this on my Twitter timeline when Magic Animate just came out, definitely for just making cool dancing videos. Outfit Anyone, also published by Alibaba Group soon after Animate Anyone, can copy the clothes on a person from one image and paste it onto the other. Well, it's definitely not something new, it's just kind of funny how they use anime characters for the first few results. Results, but it just shows how robust their model is when it comes to identifying and transferring apparels to another character. It's just that there's a mistake here where it took his abs as clothing and transferred it over to the other character. It only works on still images, but there is an official demo showing it being combined with Anime Anyone to emulate trying on clothing. I think we can all see the direction where Alibaba Group is going with this. Back in August 2023, they also published this research called Cloth to Text, which didn't get much traction, but obviously made a lot of sense in this virtual try-on trajectory. You can really tell that these body animations are not only targeting entertainment but also online shopping for apparels, as expected for the Chinese Amazon. This research provides some pretty sick 3D real-time try-on with the ability to render 2D clothing images into 3D objects and textures. China will probably be shopping in the metaverse way earlier than this as everything is now available virtually for them. Facial animations on the other hand have gotten pretty good as well. Also released by Alibaba group in cooperation with ByteDance, Vivid Talk is the latest hot talk in the town with you only needing an audio input to animate a face and look extremely realistic.
Michigan families want quality, affordable health care. Everything is animated with audio as a reference, which is pretty insane for the amount of natural movements it generated based on the audio content. And for the codes, it is not released yet, just like anything published by Alibaba Group in the last few months, which is pretty unfortunate. But what's even more interesting is that Alibaba Group published yet another facial animation research with audio called Dream Talk. Two weeks later, after they published Vivid Talk, pretty much trying to beat their own game with facial synthesis while vivid talk and dream talk look very similar in terms of functionality there is still a key difference vivid talk uses audio to animate a static image whereas dream talk is capable of the same thing on top of using audio for lip syncing for a face in a video lip syncing for singing languages while under a noisy background and being conditioned of a specific facial expression dream talk basically has it all most of these research has definitely surpassed the previous state of the art called sad talk since that talker really likes to jitter or generate excessive and unnatural movements when working with only audio files. And if you want to play with these new ones, only Dream Talk has its code available. And that's about it for this video. Check out this developer contest by Nvidia where you can potentially win an RTX 4090, a GTC conference in person pass, and so much more. You can easily participate by creating your own generative AI project in one or more of these categories, post a 90 second demo video of your AI on RTX project on these social medias using these hashtag and submit everything by February 23rd, then you will have a chance to win all of these wonderful prizes. To learn more about it, use the link down in the description to check out their contest website and also check out a fun website I made that tracks the most popular AI websites on a daily basis so you can easily glance what is popular right now. We even made a trending leaderboard that tracks the trending websites where it's ranked by the percentage of user increase from the previous day. This website is still freshly baked so let me know if you have any suggestions. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Alex J, Alex Marise, Miguelim, Degan, Fifal, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't and I'll see y'all in the next one.